Hey everybody, thank you for coming again to another Sunday book review. I'm excited. We've got lots of little things to talk about and especially let's talk about this book which is about saddle fit. Uh, in this case, it's the Western Horses Pain-Free Back and Saddle Fit book. But I can say from reading this book, I can tell you now, it's not just for Western. But if you are into Western, it's an added bonus because it talks a little bit more about Western saddles than it would talk about, say, endurance or English or treeless, you know, any of the other options that are out there. Um, the concepts to fitting to the horse's back are about the same. Um, and the one thing I liked about this book, or I thought would, you know, if, if I were to pick between this and the other book that this author wrote, uh, she also wrote about uh, English saddles. Uh, but this one was written after that one. So my assumption was that it would be better. Maybe this author would have more information. Um, she does point out that some of the information in here is actually doubled up from the English one. Uh, so to me, it just made sense that if I was going to pick one or the other, it'd probably be this one. Uh, Western saddles are a little bit more um, varied, I think. English saddles, at least to me, the uh, on the surface level, English saddles seem a little more, um, not generic, but the, the, the styles seem more limited in comparison to the plethora of uh, Western uh, saddles that are out there. Now I've got a few saddles here because I will talk a little bit about them. Um, but first let's talk about this book and why I think it's a pretty good book to go out and buy. Uh, if you're wondering about saddle fit, if you're thinking, I don't understand, and I've heard a lot of opinions. It's another opinion, obviously. Um, but the, the, the experience that the author has, the amount of knowledge uh, being put into one place so you can sit down and just read, I think is really cool. It's really, it's, uh, it's, it's got a lot of material in here. It's a, it's, it's not a thick book, but it's the printing small, I guess you could say. A lot of good pictures, um, great visuals on, on, um, for example, here's just opening up. There's so many pictures in here, uh, but just opening up this first one here says that I see is about crooked saddle. Um, uh, a lot of people ride with a crooked saddle. You'd be surprised if you're riding around and you look, you kind of think, huh, Saddle doesn't look right, or the person's a little crooked. Um, but there are 230 pages, roundabouts, 220, one, pages of information in here that talk about exactly as it kind of says, the pain-free um, back and saddle fitting. Now, to give some context to this book, I happen to have brought in three different types of saddles. One is an old Western, um, this one came with the place that we bought here. The previous owners had it, but, uh, and we have another one. This one's just lighter, easier for me to pick up. So that's the one thing about Western saddles. They tend to be a little bit heavier, um, a little bit more unwieldy uh, to sling around and put on top of a horse's back. So uh, it's gonna be my deciding factor sometimes of what I'm going to use, so. Um, but we're gonna be looking at the Western saddles. Um, you know, you've got particular rigging. Um, you know, whether it's just, uh, just one, uh, girth, or if you've got a, you got a front cinch and a back cinch, whether you've got, uh, a V rigging or you've got a three quarter rigging, you know, all those kinds of things are going to matter to your ride and your horse. And she talks about that. She talks about different riders. Uh, what is your purpose? Um, what have you tried before? What do you think you need? Um, stirrups, stirrups make a big difference as well to riding, whether or not your feet fit in a particular way. Uh, Western saddles, very typical Western saddles, you can see here, uh, we've got the tree, we've got the skirt, uh, obviously the saddle, uh, Western saddles usually have a horn. Um, depending on the type of riding you're doing, it could be a tall horn or a short horn or a wide horn. Um, roping, non-roping, reining, cutting. So there's a lot of different types of horns, but you've got the tree, you've got the flocking, uh, skirt, rigging, stirrups, I mean, all of these things. And then of course, just style, you know, whether it's got a bunch of bling on it or not. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of different things. There's a different type of seat that you might have. The cantle and the pommel might be different. You might have a deeper seat. English has that same thing. In fact, most saddles do. Um, you're gonna be talking about the, uh, the size of the seat, uh, different inches, what that means. And then of course, uh, you know, everything to do with, with, with how that is going to fit you. Now, 
I had somebody ask me if I've ever read the book um, Suffering in Silence. I haven't yet. I want to. I met the guy that wrote it, um, and he seems to know what he's talking about. So, and other people have recommended the book, so I'll probably do that. Um, but this one for now, we're going to be talking about this pain-free, uh, pain-free back and saddle fit book for Western. I'm going to just place this here out of the way. And we're going to take a look at a couple other saddles because stay. Um, it matters because we need to understand how saddles are built to be able to talk about what we're looking for, or why we're looking for it. So here we have an endurance saddle, very light saddle, um, different stirrups. These ones have a cage. Uh, I think it's called a cage. I call it a cage. I'm pretty sure I've heard it's called a cage. Much bigger foot rest, place to put your foot. Uh, different grips for your feet to sit in. Uh, these ones are much more of a resting style, very big. Very light saddle compared to most Westerns, but the same ideas underneath. We still have a tree here. It's going to have a particular width called the gullet. It's going to have a particular length and it's going to have a particular curve uh, both this way and this way and that way. So there's a lot to do with saddles and there's a lot to kind of figure out. It's got a different kind of seat, you know, there's no horn. Um, this, is a, this is a pretty big seat, probably 16 or so. A um, little bit cushier than the Western that I showed you. And uh, the rigging is a little bit different. I don't have the girth or anything on this at the moment, but um, you know, we've got these types of straps instead of uh, just a, uh, a, a mohair girth kind of deal. And um, so that's an endurance saddle. You put that off to the side here. And the last saddle that I can show you to give you context again to why you may want to look up more stuff and have a reference um, is an English saddle. This is a typical English saddle. Um, nothing special about it. It's got its pad strapped to it. And uh, same idea, you know, we're still looking at the tree. The pads that go in here, there's no flocking. It's different. We've got a particular amount of, um, of a gullet that's going to exist. And uh, there's going to be this large gap in the middle that's very obvious in English saddles. And uh, you're going to want to pay attention to that based on your horse. Personally, I, ni I like a nice wide, uh, very, very wide in here. And, um, you know, these are quite cushy from this particular saddle. The way the stirrups are on, we've got irons instead of, uh, instead of the endurance ones with the cage. Typical irons, there's nothing special about these. Um, some you can get that have a, uh, a quick release system in case you need to <laughs> get out and you can't get your feet out. Uh, breakaways, things like that. And, uh, but overall, you know, they're, they're still the same stuff. It's still, there's still, this area is still the pommel, it's still a cantle. There's still going to be a particular size, a particular shape to this. And uh, the same goes for the tree itself. It's still going to have a particular shape that's going to fit or not fit your horse's back. Um, this one I happen to bring the pad with. It's just a basic dressage, I think dressage pad. Um, but Western pads can come in a wide variety and uh, endurance as well. So that's something to think about. It's a typical English girth. This one's leather, slightly padded. Very typical, very normal. Some of them come with uh, fleece on them or some flocking as well, sheepskin. And so all of these options out there, if you're just getting into horses and you're wondering what kind of saddle to use, um, it's hard. It's not, it's not easy at all. And every horse is different and every rider is different. And one of the important parts that I liked about this book um, is that she talks about making sure that not only does the saddle fit the horse, but the saddle fits you. And I can speak from pure experience as well, same idea that if the saddle doesn't fit you, I've had saddles fit horses great. And a uh, horse gets along fine, there's no back pain, there's, there's good markings afterwards and all that kind of stuff. But when I sit in it, it's very uncomfortable and I just can't wait to get out of it. Um, a saddle that doesn't fit the rider, and it's talked about in here, very important, 
uh, is, is not one that's going to fit the horse well either because you're going to be constantly sort of shifting. You'll be uncomfortable. You won't sit right. You'll be off balance. You'll either be a little bit forward, a little bit backward to take weight off a particular part of your body, uh, which, which brings in another part of this where they, she talks about, well, we'll go over, we'll go over the table of contents, but she talks about um, how your how your body is going to react to different saddles and the the suffering in silence one the, when I talked to that guy one of the important things he said is is how men and women are different and you're going to want a different saddle based off of that men will want one that's more uh, forward or backward I can't remember but um, that book would cover it for sure uh, this one okay so let's talk about what this book has this book has a wide variety of material. I mean, the table of contents is four or five pages. It's, it's huge. So the first thing that, that she talks about is why a saddle fit matters. That's easy. Obviously, um, you know, if it hurts you or it hurts the horse, wrong saddle, plain and simple. Keep looking. Um, but, but she does talk about, you know, when it's correct, what does it look like? When it's incorrect, what does it look like? Um, some of the things you can do to kind of see if it will fit, do the belly lift stuff where they kind of arch their back a little bit, see if it fits in well. Um, recognizing saddle problems. So, you know, does your, does your horse sort of kind of do this? Does it have hurting shoulders when you're done? Does it have, you know, uh, the wrong sort of what they call sweat marks? So all covered in here. The saddle construction. Now this book will be specific about Western. So if you don't care about any of that, you can skip chapter three. Evaluating new saddles or old saddles is very difficult. She talks about some of that. Um, I mean, I can't even count how many consignment stores I've gone into. You go, you think, hey, that's kind of a nice saddle. And you sort of check it out and you realize the tree's crooked or uh, the rigging's broken and needs repair. And you're not sure if you can get it done because um, you got to find a saddle repair shop and things like that. So uh, evaluating saddles, new and old, uh, saddle fit on the horse. I mean, there's tons of things to think about, the position of where it's going to go, the, the fit of the tree, the bars. So when I say the tree here, the tree is a oh, is the whole thing. So it comes around here. These are called the bars, but I... When I think about the tree, I think mainly the bars, but the whole thing, there's a there's a... Usually these are wood with fiberglass reinforcement. Um, some of them are carbon fiber, some of them are just plastic, some are metal, and some are a combination of those things. Um, but the whole tree is where it comes up here in the pommel, and uh, there's another one that comes out the back, and they connect these bars. Now these bars are gonna have a particular shape to them. And uh, they're gonna have a particular width for the gullet and things like that. So you're gonna wanna know what your horse needs and so that leads to the next portion um, where you uh, need to be able to uh, measure your horse. You need to be able to know, does my horse have, you know, she talks about common problems. Um, well sprung ribs, slab sided, narrow backs, high withers, low withers, sort of a mutton back, um, large shoulders, whether the shoulders are uneven, one's bigger, one's smaller kind of deal. Um, the, uh, a real problematic uh, horse to fit is a suede back horse, the ones where their back is just really dipped. Um, you know, it, 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 there, there's a wide variety. So she talks all about that. That's chapter eight. Chapter six and C is about the saddle fit. Sorry, going back to the saddle fit on the horse and then riding in it. Skipped ahead to chapter eight. Chapter seven is again just more about you know assessing you know how you feel in it, getting up into it. So there's a few chapters here that talk about you and the horse. Very very important. Probably the most important part. Then she goes on to saddle pads because you've got all kinds of saddle pads. You've got the ones that are filled with air, gel, wool, synthetic, um, thick, thin. I saw one person um, go out on a ride and they had three saddle pads on. <laughs> Like the, the, like the princess and the pea story, you know? It's like, it wasn't good though. The whole saddle was rocking. Nothing was good about it, but they, they couldn't fit the saddle. So they just put a bunch of pads on top, hoping for the best. Not cool. Don't do that. But she does talk about shimming, whether or not you need to shim the pad or yeah, shim the pad or not to fit the saddle a little bit better. Ideally, my opinion, get a saddle that fits the horse, no pad, put a pad on, primarily to protect your saddle, keep the sweat and the dirt off of your saddle, makes your saddle last longer. Because if you think about it, you've already got a pad on the saddle. 
it's the, the flocking. And then from there you put another pad on because you don't want all that moisture kind of wicking up. So the saddle should fit the horse before you put anything on anyways. But if you have to, you know, you can shim the pad. She talks about that. Measuring your horse's back, we already talked about, but she does it in chapter 10. And then talking about the different types of sports you're going to want to do for Western saddles. Uh, so it doesn't cover English, but you know, there, there are, I'm not an expert in English, I won't say, but I do know that there are a few different types. You know, you're going to use them for jumping or you're going to lose, use them for dressage. There's, uh, you know, the, in my opinion, there's the main two and then there's little bits outside of that. So in this one, she talks about reining and barrel racing, cutting, Western pleasure, team penning, you know, working with cows and stuff, or whether or not you're just doing pleasure. Uh, there's also Western dressage, you know, gym counter, rodeo, uh, I don't know. And then endurance and trail riding. Some of the Western uh, saddles are really good. The really light ones, the ones that kind of move a little bit. And then uh, she talks about, you know, how to go about finding a saddle. You know, uh, how do you assess those saddles that you look at? So that's going to have a little bit to do with just Western, of course, but you can apply the same concepts to the English as well. And the last chapter is chapter 14, and we've already talked about this kind of concept, but she talks about uh, being able to massage your horse's back, care for it, understand where it hurts, be able to touch and feel, and get a good idea of what your horse is going through because they don't talk. Um, so very in-depth book lots of illustrations lots of pictures i mean i couldn't go to a page and not pull up some pictures because it's really helpful <clears throat> to be able to see um where things go how does a western saddle work does it does it need to fit this particular way how high above the withers does it need to go on which ribs where does the cinch go especially for the different types of rigging um, so very in-depth very useful uh, I don't think it's very costly. I, I don't recall the price, um, but I found it worth it. I've, I've read it and I've reread it in bits and pieces. I don't think I've read it in full, but it's a great reference book for things you may want to know about how to fit a saddle to your horse and you. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully you guys uh, have enjoyed this, uh, this little review and talking about different types of saddles. And, uh, you know, I, I encourage you, even if you are into English, Try Western out a little bit. Even if you are into Western, try English out a little bit. And both of those, you know, maybe try out Endurance a little bit. Each of these saddles can fit quite differently and, um, and feel differently. And you may be surprised. You may like one more than what you've ever liked another. Um, and the best thing to do, actually, is even she says in here, says, borrow a friend's saddle. See how it works for you. Um, saddle fit is not a black art. It is a science. Uh, so, so hold faith that it can be figured out whether or not the, the saddle is fitting well over the shoulders, whether it's bridging across the back, whether it's, you know, rocking, whether the tree is broken, all these kinds of things to be thought about when getting a saddle and putting it on your horse. So hopefully that uh, has been useful. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one next week.